This video is brought to you by NCIX.com. Great technology, selection, and service. If you have not yet found your favorite mouse, gaming or otherwise, I feel sorry for you because right now we have so many options on the market that it may become exhausting and intimidating trying to find the best one for you. And let's also not forget costly if you're trying to pick up so many ones and some don't work. Uh, and you can check out our top five gaming mice video here to get your options flowing. But there's one market segment within the uh, mice category that I still feel needs development. And and that's ambidextrous mice. I say that because one, ambidextrous mice favor two, of course, left-hand gamers, and that's awesome. And two, the symmetrical shape usually accommodates for a more diverse uh, grip style, and that's a positive. And this is why the new Rokat Kova 2016 is under review today. I feel it has a lot of potential considering it's only $50, yet it carries all the right features that would satisfy FPS and mobile gaming. The Kova 2016 comes in white and black frames, although the white edition may feel completely out of place as even Rokat doesn't carry complementing white peripherals. But at least you can customize the RGB lighting with a glowing strip at the back and the scroll wheel. Although the brightness is pretty weak and invisible unless in a very dark setting and you can see it firing down an ambient array at the surface which looks pretty awesome but place it on a dark mouse mat and this becomes pointless. Rokat recognizes the need to tailor the weight for FPS and mobile users thus the lightweight body at 101 gram which uh, is very well balanced I would say and is the perfect ballpark for my own personal use. I don't have anything negative to say about the materials used as I understand the need to keep things light the coating is fine, it's less grippy than I would like, but at 50 bucks, it's totally passable. So let's talk about the shape now. I love certain aspects of the frame, like the small curve right below the side buttons that houses my thumb perfectly well. But because the same curvature is present on the other side, I tend to position my ring and pinky fingers right above the second set of side buttons and accidentally press them while in use. The good news though, these buttons are angled inwards to prevent those accidental presses and I just have to readjust my grip so my fingers are out of the way. You also notice how the frame is in separate pieces where the thumb sits. I don't like this design decision at all. I like the shape of the curve but you can feel where the two pieces meet and it's not a smooth transition. For example, my favorite ambidextrous mouse is the Zoe FK1 with a very smooth body that is also flatter and that to me feels better for my palm hybrid grip as the top hump on the Rokat Kova has a larger slant. But having said that though, it's still uh, quite a comfortable design. The mouse feet offer really smooth glide at the bottom and the buttons are satisfactory. The primary left and right clicks are surprisingly heavy for a MOBA and FPS mouse that feel the heaviest compared to my two daily drivers, the Logitech G502 and the Myonix Caster. Here's a sound sample. The scroll wheel is surprisingly good despite having almost weak scroll steps and very thin rubber layer on the wheel, but I found my scroll control was right on point and the middle click is totally usable in game. The Kova also features dual buttons beside the primary, in a way they are also kind of part of the frame, but also easily accessible by either your point or middle fingers. They are easy to press without disturbing your aim and have a satisfying amount of travel distance with a soft finish. They are really good for quick events in games like melee or throwing stuff or even sprint if you're tired of constantly holding shift. I would say they are a great addition on a $50 mouse, especially once you find a uh, good use to them. And lastly, the DPI shift behind the scroll wheel is perfectly accessible and you have up to five settings, uh, just no visual indication when the DPI is actually switched. The last piece of the hardware is the R6 optical sensor with DPI up to 3500 and with a software boost up to 7000. I find that totally acceptable as my gaming DPI is between 800 and 1200 anyway and the sensor shows no acceleration so you can flick away no problem. We have smooth tracking and luckily no strange behavior 
for the two weeks I used it as my daily driver. The only thing I'm disappointed with is the manufacturer set liftoff distance, which cannot be changed by the user. I lift my mouse a lot, so having the cursor jump around when the sensor is close enough to the surface is really annoying. And I would love to have the feature to adjust my liftoff distance or at least calibrate the sensor for your surface. The braided cable is of nice quality with the visible branding on the USB cable for easier differentiation when it's plugged into your computer. Overall, I enjoyed my time with the Kova in FPS. Uh, sensor performed great. Once you learn the resistance on the primary buttons, it feels natural. And so now let's talk about the Rockat Swarm. You have all the needed adjustments like vertical speed, tilt speed, which is not natively present on the scroll wheel, but can be remapped to tilt instead of scroll. Then the five DPI setting and 50 dpi increments, all types of functions inside button assignments, plus the easy plus functionality if you have a Rocat keyboard to enable double functionality per key. And the disappointing part is that you cannot assign any of the unused buttons on the mouse as the easy shift plus enabler, rendering secondary functions useless unless you have a Rocat keyboard. In the advanced tab, you can set polling rate, sound feedback for switching DPI profile and hand orientation, which uh, is very nice. And finally, the most basic illumination settings. You also have this talk effects uh, feature, which is supposed to deliver dynamic lighting on the mouse or any other peripherals uh, based on what's happening on the screen. But supported games are nowhere to be found and it did not work on any of my games in my library. And finally, you have the Swarm Connect, which does not work with the Kova because at the time of this review, only the Nith app is available in the Google Play Store, which is meant to give you DPI, color control of your mouse and all types of other sort of control from your smartphone. It's a gimmicky and super buggy app. And so the takeaway for the Kova is this. At 50 bucks, it offers great sensor, decent ergonomics and quality buttons, which the most part are done well. So well done Rocat. However, there are a few major drawbacks that would make you think, hey, I may potentially spend 10 or $20 extra to get a competing mouse that offers, that gives me a little bit extra control with the sensor, like the ability to adjust uh, liftoff distance, which with a Kova you cannot do. The manufacturer set liftoff distance is way too high, so when you place the mouse down, the cursor jumps up and down, it's becoming uh, random, and you cannot really fully take control of the performance of the sensor, and that's disappointing. Even at $50, it still shouldn't have been there, especially with all the added value features like the Rocat uh, Swarm Connect and the talk effects that are completely pointless. And the second thing is you cannot actually map the Easy Shift Plus functionality onto the mouse itself, so you cannot use any of the secondary functions unless you have a complementing Rockat keyboard. It is an okay mouse, but with disappointing flaws that for $20 extra, you could spend on a competing mouse that will give you full control of the sensor, which I think is totally worth it. So that is it for this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe for more similar content. I'm Dimitri with Hyrule Canucks. We'll see you in the next video.